In this video, we're going to be looking at several examples of parametric equations. Here I have x is equal to sine of theta over 2, y is equal to cosine of theta over 2, and theta is between negative pi and pi. So the first thing we want to do is try to eliminate the parameter. So sometimes that'll involve doing some kind of substitution, but when we have um, trick functions occurring, we might think about um, getting a equation with just x and y by using identities. So remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So we can say that sine squared of theta over 2 plus cosine squared of theta over 2 is equal to 1. And here I have x is sine of theta over 2. So sine squared theta over 2 is x squared and cosine squared theta over 2 is going to be y squared. So you want to keep using um, identities in mind as a technique that sometimes helps us to do that eliminating the parameter step. So we want to ask ourselves, do we actually have the whole circle? Remember the graph that would be associated with x squared plus y squared equals 1 would be a circle, one of our conic sections, with center 0, 0 and radius 1. But is it the whole circle? Well, we actually have this restriction on theta. So we might want to um, go ahead to part B here and start doing a sketch with those different theta values and determine whether we actually have the whole circle or just a portion of the circle. So remember the best way to help you do your sketch is to plug in several values of your parameter. So notice that our parameter here is theta instead of t. Smallest theta can be as negative pi, so we'll just do a couple values between negative pi and pi. We'll say negative pi and maybe 0 and pi just give us a couple of points. We know that when theta is negative pi, I'm going to have sine of negative pi over 2. And sine of negative pi over 2 would be negative 1. Cosine of negative pi over 2 would be 0. When I have theta equals 0, I'm going to have sine of 0, which is 0 cosine of 0 would be 1. If I plug in pi, I'm going to have sine of pi over 2, which is 1, and cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. Okay, so we can go ahead and use this to sketch some points. I'm going to have the point negative 1, 0 right here. I'll have the point 0, 1 up here, and the point 1, 0 over here. Okay, so since I know that my graph is going to be some portion, at least, of a circle. I know that the portion I actually end up with here is the top half, okay? Where my arrows here should be going from left to right, because over here I had theta equals negative pi, then it was theta equals zero, then theta equals pi. Our arrows always go in the direction that our parameter is increasing. So it's not the whole circle, it's just the top half. And it's traced out in a counterclockwise direction. Oops, counterclockwise. Okay, so I want to add some additional um, restrictions here when I write that the Cartesian equation is x squared plus y squared equals 1. I don't mean that it's the whole circle. I just want it to be the top half of the circle. So it would be enough to just say um, y has to be positive, but you could also just go ahead and give the full x and um, y bounds here. So notice these, these here are my parameters theta. The actual x values here is that this is negative 1 and 1, and this is positive 1 up here. So we could say this is where, um, let me give me, a little more room. Okay, so we did know that this was a circle with center 0, 0 and radius 1, and it looks like it's for x between negative 1 and 1, and more particularly y between 0 and 1, not including the values for y between negative 1 and 0. Okay, so that gives us a full answer. Also, it would have been okay in this case to say x squared plus y squared equals 1 for y greater than or equal to 0. Okay, that would have given enough information to say it's just the top half of the circle. Okay, 
So let's look at some additional examples here. Okay, so you're going to notice the next two examples have roughly the same parametric equations, but we change things up a bit with some different intervals. Our original was for x is equal to sine of theta over 2, y equals cosine of theta over 2, with theta between negative pi and pi. Now I have theta between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. And down here I switch which one is x and which one is y. I have x is cosine of theta over 2 and y is sine of theta over 2. So we want to see how that modification to the parametric equation changes what our graph looks like. Okay, So notice that in both of these cases, um, I can add cosine squared of theta over 2 and sine squared of theta over 2 and get 1. So I'm going to have x squared plus y squared equals 1. But the question is, do I have the whole circle or a portion of the circle? And which portion of the circle do I have? As well as in what direction is this um, circle being traced out? Okay, so we'll make a table of values. Here we'll go starting from negative 2 pi. So we'll have negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0, pi, and 2 pi. So the, how I'm choosing these values over here is I'm just trying to get some values that are going to be easy for me to plug in, give me enough values so I can get an idea of um, what my graph is going to be here. So when theta is negative 2 pi, I will have um, sine of negative pi, and sine of negative pi would be equal to 0. Um, cosine of negative pi would be negative 1. When we plug in negative pi, again, we get this sine of negative pi over 2, which will be negative, um, excuse me, sine of negative pi over 2, yes, will be negative 1. We'll have cosine of negative pi over 2, which will be 0. At 0, I'll get sine of 0, which is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. At pi, we have sine of pi over 2 is 1, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And at 2 pi, remember we have theta over 2 here, I'm going to have sine of pi, which is 0, and cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So notice that I get back to the same point when I've gotten to my parameter of theta equals 2 pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph what this looks like. I was starting here at the point 0, negative 1. So that's... Here. Okay, so this is my theta equals negative 2 pi here occurring at that y value of negative 1. At theta equals negative pi, I'm at the point negative 1, 0. So that's here. So this is our theta equals negative pi at negative 1 there. Um, at theta equals 0, I'm going to be at the point 0, 1. Okay. Um, at theta equals pi, we're at the point 1, 0. Okay, and then at theta equals 2 pi, we're back to where we started. So this looks like it is the whole circle. But how I traced it out was in this counterclockwise direction. Okay, so this is the whole circle traced out still in the, um, traced out once, counterclockwise. Let me see. That's in fact clockwise, isn't it? I think I wrote counterclockwise here. But remembering how a clock goes, this one's actually going in the clockwise direction in both of these cases. Sorry about that. Okay. So those were both traced out clockwise. And that had to do with, in both cases here in those two examples, we had x was equal to the sine part and y was equal to the cosine part, but we just had different intervals for theta. So in one we got just the top half of the circle, and the second one we got the whole circle. Okay. So here, this would be correct for the Cartesian equation. It is the whole circle. I don't need any kind of restriction on x and y. All right, so let's just look at one more associated with this um, circle problem. So let me make a table now for my values for theta and x and y with these slightly different um, setup here for x and y with x being cosine of theta over 2 and y being sine of theta over 2. So again, I'll just plug in a couple of values. I'll go from negative pi to pi and also plug in 0 in the middle there. 
when theta is negative pi, I'm going to have cosine of negative pi over 2, which will be 0. And I'll have sine, oops, sine of negative pi over 2, which will be negative 1. Okay. When I plug in 0, I'm going to get cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. When we plug in pi, we have cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And sine of pi over 2 is 1. Okay, so let's just see what this gives us. So when we have x is 0 and y is negative 1, we're down here at theta equals negative pi. Then we're at the point 1, 0 here when theta is equal to 0. And at the point 0, 1 when theta is equal to pi. So again, we know this is some portion of the circle. In this case, we have the right half of the circle. Okay, so we're getting the right half of the circle, and now we are going in that counterclockwise direction. Okay, so to finish our answer about what the Cartesian equation looks like in this case, it's x squared plus y squared equals 1, but I have x restricted between 0 and 1, and y between negative 1 and 1. So I don't have the x values between negative 1 and 0. I don't have that left half. Here it would also be sufficient to say x squared plus y squared equals 1, where I have just the positive x values of the circle. Okay. So that gives us an idea of how we can uh, manipulate the direction in which our curve is being traced out and what portion of the curve we have. Okay, notice that making x the cosine component and y the sine component yielded a counterclockwise um, direction. And when we had x was the sine component and y was the cosine component, we were tracing out our circle in the clockwise direction. Okay, that'll be helpful in a, in a later example. So let's just look at one more, something that's not a, a circle. So here I have x is equal to sine t and y is cosecant t. So we still have some trig functions here. Um, and t ranges over the open interval from 0 to pi over 2. So we want to try to eliminate the parameter and sketch the curve. Okay. Well, notice I have x is sine t, y is cosecant t, but that means y is 1 over sine t. Okay, so when I look at doing a substitution to get this um, to be a single equation with x and y, I notice that I'll have y is equal to 1 over x. Okay, so we know that the equation for, or the graph of 1 over x looks like this, okay, but do we actually want the whole graph, okay, when we have t between 0 and pi over 2, we have this, this restriction on t, which may cause a restriction um, in x and y. So notice that if, oops, if our t is between 0 and pi over 2, what does that tell us about sine of t? Well, remember our sine curve. Um, it would be 0 at 0 and 1 at pi over 2, okay? So this is just a portion of the, the sine curve. So if t ranges between, sorry, this should be pi over 2 down here, um, between 0 and pi over 2, then sine of t, the output, will range between 0 and 1. But if it's open on either end here, then we'd also have sine strictly bigger than 0 and strictly less than 1. Okay, but notice that x here is defined to be sine. So that means we have this restriction that x has to be between 0 and 1. Okay, so I have y is 1 over x, where 0 is less than x less than 1. So this gives you another way to see that restriction without um, just plotting points. It was helpful to do it this way in this case because this is an open interval. Otherwise, I have to think about you know, what this graph is approaching, what sine t is approaching um, for limits as I approach, say, 0 from the right and pi over 2 from the left. So it's just a little bit easier to think about.
this way with our inequalities. Okay, so then what does our graph look like? Well, I have the portion of the um, 1 over x graph where x is just between 0 and 1. So 1 is here, we know 0 is the origin. So I just have the part in the first quadrant here, okay, going down to 1. Okay, and we notice that as um, our t values would be getting closer to, um, let's see, pi over 2, sine would be getting closer to 1. If the t values are closer to 0, um, then sine of t would be getting closer to 0. So the direction here is like this, okay, in a downward direction. As the um, parameter increases, we're getting closer to 1. Okay, so that gives you another variation on, on a kind of graph you might see with these parametric equations. So watch the next video to see the backwards problem of finding parametric equations for a given Cartesian equation.